Now I got a question. What are you black people doing keeping Sunday? Come on. Come on. Come on. All right. Come on. That's not your day. That's right. Sunday is a European fabrication. Amen. Come on. All right. Of the European, by the European, and for the European. <laughs> yeah. Mm. All right. You didn't know that? Hey guys, it's Nucky. Thank you for joining me once again. As you guys know, I'm an urban apologist. I answer questions related to being Christian, being black, being woke, either one or all three. And today we're going to talk about all three. And that is going to be unfurled in this conversation surrounding the Sabbath. Now, I've had quite a bit of buzz in my inbox and surrounding my name in general concerning my observance of the Sabbath. So I'm like, all right, that's what y'all want to talk about? Let's talk about it, baby. Let's talk about being black, being Christian, being woke, and the Sabbath. What does that have to do with either one of those three? You want to stay tuned to the end of this video because, baby, I'm about to spill all the tea. So let it be said up front that I believe that we are saved by grace through faith. So it's not anything that we do to be saved, but that once we are saved and once we do have the Holy Spirit living in our hearts, that that spirit living within us does not leave us unchanged. It changes us. It produces actions that are in line with us having the spirit within. So I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ lives in me. So I work the works of Christ. Have this fruit of the spirit. I live in submission to the Holy Spirit and allow, my, allow him to change my heart so that as the new covenant is expressed in Jeremiah 31, he will write his law on my heart. So this conversation about the Sabbath is really, for me, a conversation about one's disposition towards obedience to Christ. We know that we can't keep the law by ourselves, but we're not by ourselves. We have the Holy Spirit dwelling within, as I stated. My little children, I write to you that you sin not, but if any man does sin, he has an advocate with the Father. So it's not about keeping every jot and tittle and trying to make sure you check off all the 613 boxes, which is another conversation we about to have in a minute. It's about your conscientious decision to submit to the Spirit of God and that this decision is made manifest by your behavior. Faith without works is dead. How is sin defined? Sin is transgression of the law. Sin is also defined by every individual's conscience. So if a person knows to do right and does it not, to him it is sin. The Sabbath is no different. If you know to observe the commandments of Christ and you choose not to, choosing instead the traditions of men, then it becomes a sin. But so many people are confused about the Sabbath, whether or not we should be keeping it, observing it, when was it instituted, For whom, to whom was it given, and all of these other things. The Bible says that God winks at our ignorance, but he also says that now is the time for people to wake up. Stay woke. We're not going to spend too much time on talking about the Sabbath actually in the Bible. I think it's pretty clear that there is no command given to abstain from keeping the Sabbath in the Bible. Such a verse does not exist. The only thing that people do is basically gather up different verses and put them together and come to a conclusion that they feel um, means that the Sabbath should not be observed. But there is nowhere in the Bible that we are commanded to not observe the Sabbath and neither is there a command to change our observance at, for a holy time from the Sabbath day to Sunday. Historically, Sunday, the first day of the week, for quite some time has been misrepresented as the Lord's Day. So when people read in the Bible, the Lord's Day, they associate that with Sunday because that's what people have been calling it out here in, you know, the post-biblical era. But where is that in the Bible? It is not in there. In fact, the Lord calls Sabbath his day. Sometimes people also call Sunday the Sabbath, like they literally call it the Sabbath, even though everybody knows one, two, three, four, five, six, seven lands you on Sabbath, the day after Friday, the seventh day of the week is not Sunday. Jesus never violated the Sabbath. He said the Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. But when was the Sabbath made for man? Was it made for man when Jesus died on the cross? No, the Sabbath was made for man in Genesis on the first seventh day there ever was when God himself rested on the seventh day. Any argument of the, of the apostles gathering on the first day of the week must also take into consideration that they gathered literally every day. Some say 
I keep every day holy. Well, praise God. You are supposed to. We're all supposed to observe time with the Lord daily and spend time with him all the time, every single day, every moment. He should be with you and you should be with him, communing with him. Yes. But that is not something new to the New Testament. That is not a new covenant idea that we're supposed to spend every day with God. People were always supposed to spend every day with God. And he still said to observe the seventh day as his holy day. But what about Colossians chapter 2? Don't, don't Colossians say something about the Sabbath being nailed to the cross and meats and, and drinks and we can eat what we want and all that stuff? No, it does not. As a matter of fact, let's go there. Colossians chapter 2, starting with verse 14, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them. Let no man, therefore, judge you in meat, or in drink, or in respect of an holy day, or of the new moon, or of the Sabbath days, which are a shadow of things to come. But the body is of Christ. Starting with verse 14, what is the handwriting of ordinances that was against us? Let us turn to, let us turn to Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 26. Take this book of the law and put it in the side of the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God, that it may be there for a witness against thee. So what is the handwriting of ordinances that serve as a witness against us? It is not the Ten Commandments which were found inside of the Ark, but this book of the ordinances that Moses wrote with his own hand, the handwriting of ordinances that was against us because it was placed on the side of the Ark, as Deuteronomy says, a witness against us. Upon further investigation into verse 16, we see that it mentions meats and drinks, but it is not referring to the consumption of meals. Observe the following verse. Ezekiel 45, verse 17. And it shall be the prince's part to give burnt offerings and meat offerings and drink offerings in the feasts and in the new moons and in the Sabbaths. In all solemnities of the house of Israel, he shall prepare the sin offering and the meat offering and the burnt offering and the peace offerings to make reconciliation for the house of Israel. Colossians chapter 2, verse 16, is talking about offerings, meat offerings and drink offerings, and the holy days, which were called Sabbaths. The days on which they kept their holy feasts were also called Sabbaths. Let us go to cha Leviticus chapter 23 and look at a few verses here. We might as well start at verse 1, child. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, Concerning the feasts of the Lord, which you shall proclaim to be holy convocations, even these are my feasts. Six days shall work be done, but the seventh day is the day of rest, a holy convocation. You shall do no work therein. It is the Sabbath of the Lord in all your dwellings. That is the day of the Lord, the seventh day of every week, as we see in Genesis chapter two. Then the first feast that is mentioned by name here is Passover in verse five. Verse seven tells you not to do any work. So he's saying, treat this like the Sabbath, but it is a Sabbath. Verse 13 says, And the meat offering thereof shall be two tenths deal of fine flour mingled with oil, an offering made by fire unto the Lord for a sweet savor. And the drink offering thereof shall be of wine, the fourth part of an hymn. You see, once again, it is referring to meat offerings and drink offerings. Let's take a look also at verse 24. Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, In the seventh month, in the first day of the month, you shall have a Sabbath, a memorial of blowing of trumpets, and holy convocation. You shall do no servile work therein, but you shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. So it doesn't matter what day of the week this particular feast falls on or any of the feasts falls on. It doesn't have to fall on the seventh day of the week for it to be considered a Sabbath. This is in addition to the weekly Sabbath. This is the whole point that I'm trying to get you to understand. Whatever, whatever meat offerings and drink offerings are offered on a high day, on a feast day, it is, it is referred to as a Sabbath. Verse 37 says, these are the feasts of the Lord, which he shall proclaim to be in holy convocation, to be holy convocations, to offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord, a burnt offering and a meat offering, a sacrifice and a drink offering, everything upon his day. Beside the Sabbaths of the Lord, 
and beside your gifts and beside all your vows and beside all your free will offerings which you give unto the Lord. This particular Sabbath can be observed on the third day of the week if that's the day that this lands on. So what I'm saying to you is when it's telling you that his that he nailed the Sabbath, the observance of Sabbath to the cross, it's not talking about the weekly Sabbath. It is specifically talking about these Sabbaths, which were feast days. That's what was nailed to the cross. Verse 17 says that those are shadows of things to come, but the body is of Christ. They were pointing towards his crucifixion. They did that. That's what the lamb was for. Behold the lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. All of these offerings and sacrifices pointed to the cross. The weekly Sabbath was not a prophecy. It was a memorial to go back to the original Sabbath that was kept by the Lord himself. It specifically says that the reason why he's telling them to observe it is because in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth. And that does not apply specifically to the Jews. He did not make the heavens and the earth only for the Jews. He made it for man. Mankind, and this is why Jesus says the Sabbath was made for man. So why is it that everybody goes to church on Sunday? That's what we want to talk about. Why are we going to church on the first day of the week? Well, uh, Sunday observance has been in existence for a long, long time. And at first it's, it grew as different factions here and there, different groups here and there, but it eventually became a universal thing as we see today. And so how did that happen? So the first push toward making Sunday a universal holiday uh, is seen in Africa actually, by Pope St. Victor I in AD 200. In Rome, he enforced the observance of Easter on Sunday. Whereas before Easter was observed in accordance with the Passover, Victor declared that at that time, Easter would henceforth be observed strictly on Sundays without regard to when the Passover actually had taken place in accordance with the Jewish calendar. And then he said, if y'all don't do this, if y'all don't keep Easter on Sunday, you get excommunicated, baby. Meaning he's going to strip you of your salvation. I just find that fascinating how people think they can strip you of their, of your salvation. Nevertheless, he lost that fight and the churches continued to observe Easter in their traditional way. So much so that even into the fourth century, which is about a hundred years later, we see Constantine banning the observance of Easter in accordance with Nisan. And he is quoted as saying, let us then have nothing in common with the detestable Jewish crowd, for we have received from our Savior a different way. Coming from Constantine. Now with Constantine, he's just a lovable character, right? Because so many people just throw all these claims on top of Constantine. Oh, Constantine, you know, he created Christianity at the Council of Nicaea. And so whenever we hear his name, we automatically put up a red flag like whatever this person about to say about Constantine is probably a lie. But there are things that this man actually did do. And you can look them up yourself. Such as Constantine being the first person to institute a Sunday observance law. He legislated the observance of the first day of the week as a day of rest, which is in direct contradiction to scripture. In 321 AD, he created the following law, which is found in Codex Justinianus. On the venerable day of the sun, let the magistrates and people residing in the cities rest and let all workshops be closed, although there was an exception for farmers. Following this trend, Theodosius in 389 AD also declared Sunday a holiday. The Council of Laodicea, actually banned the Sabbath. Canon 29 of the Council of Laodicea, which you can look up for yourself, this is an official church record, it states, Christians must not Judaize by resting on the Sabbath, but must work on that day rather than honoring the Lord's day. And if they can, resting then as Christians. But if any shall be found to be Judaizers, let them be anathema from Christ. Stripping people of their doggone salvation once again because they trying to rest on the Sabbath day as the Lord commanded for us to do, child. At the Council of Trent, another church document that you can look up for yourself, and I put all the links where they need to be, so y'all go ahead and click them and fact check your girl, you know what I'm saying? The Catechism of the Council of Trent states, The Church of God has thought it well to transfer the celebration and observance of the Sabbath to Sunday. What are they talking about? Why would he say that the church transferred the celebration and observance of the Sabbath to Sunday? Well, the Roman Catholic Church in its own catechism, which is available on Amazon and also the link for you is right here. Here's a screenshot. Says in its own catechism, a catechism is basically like the book of what they believe. It's an educational religious book, basically. And so here's the information that they have for their converts. It says, what is the third commandment? The answer, the third commandment is remember that thou keep holy the Sabbath day. Brrr. 
Time out. The third commandment is remember to keep holy the Sabbath day. Actually, that's the fourth commandment. So I'm going to take this little tiny space right here and interject a piece of my testimony. When I was in when I was a child, I was as you guys know, most of you know, I was raised in the traditional African religion of Ifa, uh, Yoruba. But I was also raised a Catholic. My family was very much into syncretism, and I distinctly remember approximately at the age of eleven or twelve, approaching a calendar and thinking, if we are to observe the seventh day and keep it holy, why do we go to church on the first day of the week? This was a question that was in my mind that would not be answered until years later when I was in high school and I was showing a piece of gum in my classroom and I walked over to the trash can and spit out the piece of gum. The gum made a funny sound when it hit the bottom of the trash can. That caught my attention. So I went back to look and see what it was. And it was a magazine with a picture of the Pope on it. And this kind of led me to leave Christianity because I found out in this magazine that there were two different versions of the Ten Commandments. And I having I affiliated myself as being a Catholic because I was raised Catholic. And so they quoted, they had like an image of what the biblical Ten Commandments were versus what Catholicism's Ten Commandments were. And I compared the two and I said, hold on, baby, these Catholic commandments is exactly what I learned growing up. I remember distinctly that the the Ninth and Tenth Commandment both had to do with coveting. But in the Biblical Ten Commandments, that is not so. There's only one commandment about coveting. So what the Catholic Church did was they removed the commandment regarding idols. They removed, how are you going to remove a whole law out of God's law? Some of us are still doing the same. Some of us believe that we only have to keep nine commandments. Some of us believe we don't have to keep any commandments at all. Some of us believe we have to keep ten commandments, but that Sunday is the Sabbath. But back to the story. They removed the second commandment. And so now the fourth commandment becomes number three. Well, everybody knows you have to have ten. So they split the tenth one in two and made it nine and ten. This is something you can look up for yourself. But let's carry on. Which is the Sabbath day? Answer, Saturday is the Sabbath day. Question, why do we observe Sunday instead of Saturday? Answer, we observe Sunday instead of Saturday because the Catholic Church transferred the solemnity from Saturday to Sunday. You did what, brother? You, you did, huh? You transferred the what now? These are their words. The church substituted, oh, excuse me. Question, why did the Catholic Church substitute Sunday for Saturday? Answer, the church substituted Sunday for Saturday because Christ rose from the dead on a Sunday. And the Holy Ghost descended upon the apostles on a Sunday. The next question is, by what authority did the church substitute Sunday for Saturday? Who you is to be doing this? And the answer is, the church substituted Sunday for Saturday by the plenitude of that divine power which Jesus Christ bestowed upon her. What does the third commandment command? The third commandment commands us to sanctify Sunday as the Lord's day. So it was the Catholic Church, according to the Catholic Church themselves, um, who made Sunday the Sabbath and called it the Lord's day because they have the power to do so by Jesus Christ. The power to change God's laws. Jesus gave you the power to change God's laws. I don't think so, baby. Oh, no. What does this have to do with being a Christian black woke? Here we are. Well, it has to do with being Christian because it has centers around whether we're going to teach as doctrine the commandments of men, which they literally say it's a command that they made up. What does it have to do with being woke? Now I got a question. What are you black people doing keeping Sunday? Come on. Come on. Come on. All right. Come on. That's not your day. That's right. Sunday is a European fabrication. Amen. Come on. All right. Of the European, by the European, and for the European. <laughs> yeah. Mm. All right. You didn't know that? You are the man that kept the Sabbath and preserved it so that I could get it. Yeah. yeah. Come home. Come home. Come on home. Well, if we're going to decolonize our theology and sever ourselves from all European-based thought process as it relates to Christianity, we're now on this wave where we don't want to look at the Bible through a European lens because that's what got us believing in a white Jesus and all this other stuff for centuries. And now we're realizing, oh, 
pump your brakes, bruh. We realize y'all threw a lot of stuff in there that wasn't really in there. So decolonizing theology strip simply means stripping it of these biased perspectives that we inherited from Europeans, basically. And what I'm saying to you is the observance of Sunday as a day of worship is one of those things that needs to be stripped away from what the Bible is actually saying. What does it have to do with being black? Funny you should ask, because I'm going to give you an answer. Turn with me to Church History of Ethiopia, page 87 and 88. The Ethiopians here are giving a reason for why they keep the Sabbath. Now, they also observe, observed the first day of the week. But pay attention. On the Sabbath day, because God, after he had finished the creation of the world, rested thereon, which day, as God would have it called the Holy of Holies, so the not celebrating thereof with great honor and devotion seems to be plainly contrary to God's will and precept, who will suffer heaven and earth to pass away sooner than his word, and especially since Christ came not to dissolve the law, but to fulfill it. It is not therefore an imitation of the Jews, but in obedience to Christ and his holy apostles that we observe that day. The favor that was showed to the Jews being transferred to us Christians. Now, this is a lot of language that basically says, like, we're doing it because we believe that this is what God is telling us to do in Ethiopia. Now, what we need to realize also of great importance, on pages 311 and 312 of the same book, you will find uh, that, that the Ethiopians observed the Sabbath, just like they just said, with such a passion. But when the Romans came, the Roman Catholics came, they told them, oh, no, brother, y'all got to stop that old Sabbath keeping. We need y'all to keep Sunday. We need y'all to get in line with the rest of us, get down, lay down, and, and keep the traditions of men on the first day of the week like we do. So the Ethiopians were gracious and said, you know what? We can observe the Sabbath and observe Sunday. We see no problem with devoting an extra day to the Lord. We're going to do that. That wasn't good enough for the Roman Catholic Church. They said, not only do you have to observe the first day, but you must work on the seventh day. So the response of the, of the Ethiopians, they pulled out their swords and they said, bro, we're going to have to die about this. And they literally went to war with the Romans over the observance of the Sabbath. Because they were not about to let somebody come in and tell them to violate their own consciences to fall in line with everybody else. We will not, my lord. You will! Oh, you stand on my soul! Before I let anyone take from me the word of God and ask me to deny my belief... I will kneel and let him strike off my head. So I say to you, before I let a man tell me how to observe the law and the teachings of God, I will kneel down and let him strike off my head. Stay Christian, stay black. Stay woke.